What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's Capes and Cows. Big thing. And man, this is going to be a heavy, heavy Superman issue. It really is. There's so much Superman news. The cast was tweeted out yesterday. James Gunn puts a whole entire uh, picture of uh, the majority of the cast that we knew, plus Otis. That's right. There's also some uh, there's some Green Lantern possibilities. Is more Superman stuff. Are they going to do the Kingdom Come story? It looks like it. Maybe the 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 S emblem certain certainly looks like that that issue. So I wonder, could be uh, switching up. Fantastic Four. There's some more stuff there. There's a few different stories here, um, and you want to jump back to DC. Andy Muschietti apparently still is going to be doing uh, Batman and Robin or whatever it's called. What's the what's the name of that thing called? Uh, uh, it's called uh, whatever the hell. Batman the Brave and the Bold. There you go. Perfect. Uh, and then jump. We're gonna jump. We're gonna stay in DC. Lex Luthor. The thing that stood out to me the most was Nicholas Holt's bald head. He looks great. The boys has a premiere date. There's tons, tons of stuff, guys. And we'll be diving into that whole report that came in about Marvel and how Marvel's gonna change up their stuff and the fact that they're dropping the Kang name out of the Kang Dynasty movie and all that. So there's tons of stuff for us to talk about today. So I'm excited that you're going to be here. Now, if you're on Patreon, you're watching this on Thursday night or even in the morning on Friday. That's amazing. That's what you can do. If you go to patreon.com slash the big thing show, you get capes and cows every Thursday night. Damn. That's right. Hit that button. Subscribe to the channel. We are getting close. Close to 200,000. At the current moment, we are at 129,569. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, 60, not not just sixty nine, five sixty nine. So you got five of those. Five sixty nine. But anyway, it's me and it's Winston. It's capes and cows. Let's do it. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's capes and cows. It's myself, Winston A. Marshall, and me. <laughs> so if you're wondering why Winston is losing it. I showed Winston. I, I did a poll yesterday, actually. Ooh. Was yesterday's opening of the big thing the funniest opening ever? And I just showed you. That might have been of everything. Of, of, of Collider Live, of SEN, of Big it's one Thing. one of the best openings ever. Holy ever. I'm not even going to tell you. I'm not even going to tell you because if you didn't watch it, you missed out. Because I saw, because I noticed that sometimes you get like the, the this the, and for YouTube for people who pay attention to the analytics like I do, um, there, you get like the, either the thumbs up the uh, up arrow or the down arrow, right? Mm -hmm. And it was, at one point it was the down arrow and then it was like the, th like the, the regular, it was just, it was like the check mark. So it was like, it was on par with everything else, the, okay. the views. But I'm like, you guys are absolutely, you missed it. You missed out. You missed out. If you didn't see yesterday's Dude, episode, the beginning of it, it you missed out. It 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 it, get, it goes to the point that from now on, people have to watch intros. Because to be honest with you, in a lot of cases, if I'm watching our show, I'll just jump to right after the animation to be like, oh, the show's starting. Right. You know what I'm saying? That just goes to show you can't miss you intros. Can't, you cannot miss the intro. <laughs> you can't, you you can't, can't miss the intro, especially with Brett and Roxy. You yeah. can't. You can't. I, you can't. It's, 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 it's paramount to like a sitcom cold open. Yeah. Like, to be honest with you. And, and the funniest part about it, like, y'all go back and watch yesterday's episode. It's you talking about it. Yeah. Roxy, you just kind of see your head. No, no, like, no, don't, don't give it. Don't, don't, don't give it away. Just watch Brett's face. That's the only thing I'm going to say. Brett, watch Brett's face Brett, the Brett whole makes, time. Brett makes the whole bit. Brett makes the whole bit. <laughs> and, and and his face and I got, goes on I a got journey. lucky though. I got lucky though because I goofed and I hit the wrong button at yeah. first, yeah. and it landed on him first, yeah. which actually made it better. It did because because literally, I meant to do that. I meant his to do that. his face was all of it. It was that was the was, roller coaster. It was, and well, her 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 reaction to it. Was pretty awesome too. Yeah, her reaction to it absolutely. Well. So if you don't know what we're talking about, it's on you. If you know what we're if you know what we're talking about, then you're in on it. You're in on the joke. It's not. It's not like it's behind a paywall. It's live. It's on the channel. It's a Thursday episode. If you missed it because you didn't want to see it, that's up to you. So you have an God. opportunity to click on the button. You didn't do it. Um, but those who you did, you were re rewarded and then some. <laughs> but we did the because yesterday's episode we did two things. So we won't, we'll cover all the comic book movie stuff. Obviously, here it's what we do on this show. But we talked about Dune Part mm -hmm. Two, um, and we talked about how it's just a perfect movie. 
It's a perfect, wow. it's a perfect movie. You didn't take me, bitch. No, plus ones. And Roxy said the same thing. Um, <laughs> didn't she go though? No, she didn't. She didn't see it. I'm so. Oh, no. she. You were just talking about it, but she. she was I was just, the only one that saw it. Yeah. Wow. It was. There were no plus ones for that one, and it is. And go and see it. I, I plan I on it. it. It's. It's. And you see, you're lucky because you just saw the first one like a month ago. Right. So it's so fresh in your brain from the big screen to another big screen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna lose your mind over it. Um, the other thing, oh no, wait, this is this is actually a comic book movie story, so it's relevant. And we should actually probably talk about this first. Hmm. All right, Joker two. It's one of my highly anticipated movies. A lot of people's highly anticipated movies. The first movie was a massive hit, billion dollars. Only cost sixty million dollars to make once in the first movie. Sixty hmm. million. Well, throw that out the window because the second movie, Warner Brothers spends big. Joker two budget apparently. Two hundred million dollars. Lady Gaga's twelve million dollar payday, and and I guess Joaquin was like twenty. So right there is like thirty two. There's something along the lines there. Uh-uh. But this is this is the problem with with Hollywood, man. It's a problem with they, they don't they don't learn. They, they don't learn. I'm not going to read the report because that's that's the story. The story is this thing costs two hundred million dollars, and I know the two. Look, people wanted to get Joaquin back, so you're going to have to spend money to get him back. So, I would look at Deadpool for example, right? Mm. Deadpool one cost something like uh, fifty or sixty million, whatever it was, something, yeah, something like no, less. I think I think it was like fifty five. The second movie cost one hundred and ten, and the first movie did a eight hundred million or something along the lines. So offer points, offer something else. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Give like I'm sure he probably has some. I wouldn't be surprised if we look up and he does. He probably movie. has a yeah. producer credit. Give him just more back end points. Give him the Tom Hanks deal. Right. Tom Hanks will be like, give me two mil and then give me some back end points. Yeah. Like especially if it was that big of a hit. If it was one of those things, did did he get a nomination for that? I can't remember. He won for Joker. Yeah. Am I smoking crack? Did I forget that? Let me double check. I I'm no, sure. he he won Wait, for. Let me double check. Hold on. Yeah, he won it. He won it in 2020. Uh, 20. So yeah, yeah. I, I guess I just, it slipped my mind because in, I, I'm remembering all of his nominations and I was sure he either won for Walk the Line or the Master, but he I, I he yeah, won for it, Joker. Yeah, Holy because, crap. Yeah, because they had that whole, it was the whole thing that I think it was him and Heath Ledger were the only two people to ever win for the same character or something like that. Something along the lines. And like comic book, uh, uh jo- like acting jobs never win either. It's it's rare. It's it rare. like they, they, yeah. what these two and then you have to look into it. I mean, uh, Angela Bassett should have should have won. won. Yeah, um, but you have to probably look into it. But the fact, look, I understand the why you want him back, and I understand that you're gonna have to pay more money. You're not gonna make the movie again for sixty million dollars. You're just not. But you could have made it for one hundred and twenty. They you could have made it for one hundred twenty. They need. I mean, this is one of those situations where it was already going. So I guess you could just say, okay, well, this was just old regime shit going on. But yeah. like, it's 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 like you're not learning your lesson. But right. again, it just feels like this was ar- the ball was already moving right. before was, they decided to it do it. Was it was before the strikes. It was right. all that stuff. They already put everything into play, and so that is true. That is true. It's and you know, hopefully that they people. It's this is one of those ones. Not that it necessarily gets a pass, but. I think you're 100 percent right. I think you're right in the fact that it's like, okay, let's see how it does. It was made before the strikes. Hopefully, they don't keep doing this. Be like, look, Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park's another one that they're going to do now with Gareth Edwards. Mm. Great choice, I think, for the mm. role. Mm. That movie should cost no more than 130 million tops. Yeah, tops. Yeah, I yeah. still say that they should go. They should scale it down and almost a twenty is scaled down now. No, 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 no. I know, but yeah. I'm saying go, go like. Get out, like get out. Obviously, it was a long time ago mm-hmm. now. But go, go a twenty four budget with That's it, and I'll, and yeah. get to the get to the thriller horror element instead sure. of trying to make. Well, I think Jurassic Park is harder to do that. I always I always talk about like Terminator for that mm. because Jurassic Park you, you, is because of what they did with you know the PG thirteen putting kids in there. It's become sure. a family brand. So, but I still think you can do it. I think I still think you can scale it down tremendously. But look at. Look at something like the creator. Mm. That's what I talk about the mm. creator. That movie only cost seventy million dollars. Looks mm-hmm. like it cost two hundred million dollars, right. and that's probably why they got him. Mm-hmm. So hopefully they scale down. But anyway, this yeah. movie though, Joker two, um, and the, the other, it's not. We're not in the the comic book glory years right now. No. Comic book movie glory years. So no, these movies are. I do think and I keep saying I think Deadpool three will get the closest to a billion. I think this is. I think Deadpool three is a better chance at doing a billion than this one does. Because I, I agree. I think that the 
the intrigue of the uh, because that was it was so mysterious with that movie, and it was so like, oh, the Joker's getting his own movie, and now it's not necessarily old hat, but it's been done. It's also a musical, and so I yes. think I, I think you will. There will mm. some people that aren't going to care. There's some people that are going to love the idea, but I think there's going to be a, yeah, a, a group of right. people that are going to go. I don't know why. It, yeah, right, right. Because see, they had they had such a good thing with that king, the King of Comedy, uh, Martin Scorsese vibe, right? With what they're doing now with this one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I look. I'm. It's still on my list. Yeah, I still and and I'm because you said that too. It's I am. I I, I don't want to use the word forgiving because they shouldn't have spent this kind of money in the first place. But I am. I do believe that it was made before all these different changes with the strikes and all that stuff too. They just. The budgets need to change because we're not in a billion. Everybody can hit a billion dollar movie, and you. It's like Bro. I was talking about this. You throw in darts at that billion dollars you, and you, stop it. You you Just you make need a profit. You need to go. You need to go after either known IPs that will kill, or you need to go after fresh IPs, and in both cases, scale down. So, yeah. like I think of some of the more successful movies of last year, as far as it goes. And you don't include the Guardians 3 type situation, though. I guess if you're talking about IP you know that kills, mm -hmm. that's fine. You're closing out that trilogy. That makes sense, right? Right, right. But then, like, I think about The Blackening. I think about uh, uh, Five Night at Freddy's. Yeah. Those are right. those are situations where you spent five mil and you turned out and 15. You spent yeah. 20 mil and you turned out 80. Yeah, and like, it's, it's harder with the, the really... I, I, I'm with you, but it's harder because you have these big, massive IPs, and with that comes even major more marketing right? absolutely I'm, I'm with you i think that i think that the budgets and i've been saying this on on the show for a while the budgets need to be scaled but this is one of those ones and a scale of a hundred million dollars a hundred million dollars is not the hundred million dollars it was back in 2002 no it's it's essentially what 40 or 50 million dollars was in 2002 right so if you do that and you can make that kind of movie. This movie should have been no more than eighty million to hundred million dollars. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe one twenty if you're going to double it. And because you're going to, they're they're taking their shot because they want to get the Lady Gaga audience. That's yes. what they're doing. Absolutely. I I mean I think the big thing that people, no pun intended, yeah. that people just have to remember is is this idea that people aren't fully going to the movies just for spectacle. Mm -hmm. Like yes, right. that you want that. From time to time, but like again, the movies that people are like, oh my god, yes. like I know that Godzilla minus one had spectacle. I still haven't seen it yet. I need to, but to my knowledge, it also was not like a massive budget. It was the story was so gripping and the acting was so gripping. How much did the movie cost? If I had to guess, I know that they're up for a special effects award. If I had to guess, I'm gonna say maybe a hundred. Fifteen million. That's my point. That's but, exactly my point. But, I know it didn't make money, but it's, it did. It, it for fifteen million dollars. For fifteen million, it did. However, what people will push back on is that the labor laws and other things in Japan are significantly different. Sure, but the movie looks like it's three hundred million dollars, and that's my point. And it's exactly right. It's a great point because the other thing is, even if it was made in America with the, it would have cost eighty. It right. would have been like Creator. Right. Yeah. So that's what you could do. It didn't have any major stars. There's certain movies like Jurassic Park, Godzilla, that you don't need to spend the big money on the talent because it's the IP. People are going to go see Jurassic Park because of dinosaurs. Right. They're going to see certain, like the, the Joker, you're going to see because Joaquin Phoenix. I get getting, getting Lady Gaga. I get it. I understand it. And it's just, I think it's a good choice for Harley Quinn. But man, that's a lot of money. Two hundred million. That's a lot yep. of money. First and, one made a billion, which cool, awesome. So did Aquaman. So, and so did Mar Miss Marvel. I mean, right. uh, yeah. like Captain Marvel. Yep. And I and and again, I get those are all different. I get that the Joker arguably is a bigger character than both Aquaman <laughs> and Captain Marvel put together. Yeah. So there's lots that mm -hmm. you could say about that, but at, at the same time, you're flirting with a dangerous game here because how many times have IPs or at least franchises mm -hmm. like brands done this and it backfired like we we watched it happen over and over and over yeah. again last year all three of those movies hit at a very different time of what comic book movies where they were in the forefront every one of them it's it's it honestly at what scares me but i hope things change it feels like a lot of these people that are green lighting these budgets are not reading the room right you 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 need to like uh, we, we both do stand up if you're in a room and you're like yeah i don't know if all my my n word jokes are going to fly in this like white biker bar right then i got to i got to adjust and do just pull something else out you know what i'm saying right. like it, yeah. it's the same thing i if, didn't i didn't do those jokes at the biker bar <laughs> 
I did not do them. I did not do them. I don't believe you. No, I didn't do them. On Black History Month? <laughs> I didn't do them. I didn't do them. Um, anyway, so look, the D, it's, it's, I think everybody's going to be on the same page. People were tweeting me because they know that I've been going on this rant about how the overspending for budgets is just, it's, and it's not just, it's, it's just, I'm almost like want to shake each studio metaphorically by the, by the ears mm. and be like, what, what are you doing? You have this IP. <laughs> what are you doing? You could yeah. make, you can make hand over fist if you spent so much little money and made 300 million on it. And I always use the Indiana Jones. If, if you made Indiana Jones for $60 million, that movie made 360 million. It's a profit. Right. But it didn't. Black Adam movie cost way too much money, made 400 or whatever it made, barely broke even, lost money. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? And, 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 and again, about reading the room, it doesn't mean that stars aren't important. I feel like you need to have somebody to kind of anchor it in. But especially if you're doing these smaller things, that means that you don't have to pay megastar money, right? And and so it's not that much of a loss if it doesn't if it doesn't no, work right. out in that regard. But then also, yes, I get it's the Rock, but like Black Adam for us comic book nerds, fine, that, yeah. great. But for people that don't, they'd be like, The Rock's doing a superhero movie. Who, who is the Black Adam? Right. They, they, they know because <laughs> of the Rock. He was the reason why that movie made any money. But you know who's also to blame though, besides the studios here, hmm. the agents. Yeah, the agents are, are to blame for it because the agents go, well, wait a minute, this is a big budget movie, guys. We're, my client's not going to do this for uh, you know for four million. They're going to do I it mean, for okay, ten. Hold on, I can't I can't hate somebody for trying to secure the bag. Like I'm I not, know, but I'm just but I'm but it doesn't take away it doesn't take away that portion of the blame. So that that's the point at which I need the studios. Then like it's weird to be rooting against. You know, as someone that acts to be rooting against getting less money, but then again, get creative. We just talked about if you want Joaquin to come back, and he's like nothing for nothing less than twenty. Fine. You need to bring the budget down just in case things don't go well. And it's like, look, man, you earn an Oscar from this. We know that you understand the character. You love playing the character. We'll give you 10. But then we're going to give you six back end points instead of like our standard two we give you. Right. And then all of a sudden, if you do hit two Billy, well, guess what? He's he's <laughs> more than happy. His generations are set. He's right. more than happy. And you you have mitigated your risk. It's essentially yeah. for anybody that that plays craps. I, I don't know if you're a big Vegas person or anything like that. It's it's taking your odds. I it's, know. It's just but there's it, it greed. Greed runs in all different streets. <laughs> anyway, so what do you guys think? Do you think that 200 million because of how successful the first one? Do you disagree? And you think, oh look, 200 million, they've earned it. Go ahead, see what you can do with 200 million. Let's see if we can get that Billy. I don't know. See what you guys think. Comment on each topic. We really want to know. Want to get your thoughts. All right. The big story. Yesterday, James Gunn said, guess what, guys? I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to post. And this time he posted not yelling at somebody on the internet about how they were wrong about a scoop. No. He said, look at this. With Superman Legacy. With the cast reporting to Atlanta for a table read before shooting begins, James Gunn shared a key Lex Luthor detail and a behind-the-scenes photo confirming Lex Luthor will indeed be bald. The cast of Superman Legacy was recently assembled for a table read in Atlanta, and it's already been confirmed that the cameras are going to start rolling on the movies next month. Does that mean we'll get set photos? We'd be shocked if something doesn't eventually show up online, and if we're lucky, we may even get to see some of the reboots many heroes suited up, which will arguably offer our best idea yet of what DC Studios is going for with the new DCU. Now, one lingering question has been answered by James Gunn himself when a fan asked the filmmaker and DC Studios co-CEO on threads whether Lex Luthor actor Nicholas Holt is bald yet, and the filmmaker responded, he is indeed. And that should come as a relief after Batman v Superman's portrayal of Luthor, where he's played by Jesse Eisenberg, and a behind-the-scenes photo confirms Gunn wasn't lying. Holt was photographed alongside several legacy cast members, not to mention Gunn and fellow DC Studios boss, Peter Safran. When the Lex Luthor actor was spotted arriving in Atlanta a few days, he had hair. So the fact that he shaved surely means shooting is set to begin imminently. He looks great, by the way. Mm -hmm. He looks great as Lex mm -hmm. Luthor. Really great. Look at that cast. Why is Nathan Fillion front and center, though? Because Nathan Fillion, you, you understand that Nathan Fillion is like that that, that kind of cool kinda... uncle now, like like that's the that's the he's the he's the older he, uncle vibe. Never had the kids, but he's I know. just it looks like he took the he's the one taking the picture or the one like you know being there. But it's like I it's it could be planned out. And I'll tell you what, if I didn't know that Nicholas Holt was was Superman, I think that this cat in the back from Barry is is, is that's a yeah, Barry guy, right? That, that's a uh, uh, oh my god, Brainiac, right? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. is he playing Brainiac? I thought so. Uh, maybe not. Because that's the that. Oh my goodness! But, but either way, so. 
And so you look at this cast and you look at all of them, and I guess maybe it's kind of a strategy because Corn Sweat's in the back and he's massive now, so they don't want him. But isn't this the same dude that was he's in Black a- Adam? No. It was No, no, no. You're confusing it. That's the dude that played Darwin oh, in first class. He was an X-Men. Right. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Um, and you're then, thinking of Aldous Hodge. That's exactly right. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. He was great in, in X-Men first class. Mm-hmm. Who's this girl with the sunglasses? Who's that? I don't know who that is. I don't, know I don't remember. I don't know this. And then Rachel Cornsweet. I mean, it's not the best. Rachel Cornsweet. You already getting them married off, I'm, dude? I'm, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so, I'm so just beaten down by jury duty. I have no idea. Rachel Cornsweet. <laughs> Lois Lane. I'm gonna call her Lois Lane. Hey man, it's a Brosnan. Maybe, I, I don't know if either of them are married, but maybe know. maybe love spawns on the maybe. on the on the set. Maybe Brosnan. Um, but and Jimmy Olsen in the back too. It's 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 great. It gets me excited for sure. But it does. They're like, why is Philly in like sh- sh- stealing the stealing the spotlight in the front? But just because he probably took the picture. Well, uh, just he took it, but also he's playing Guy Gardner. I couldn't think of yeah. a more perfect yeah, person sure. to be like. Sure. I'm gonna take the damn photo. Yeah. Yeah. But Lex Luthor. I mean, I mean, just to, to look at that again, man. Like. He, he looks great. He looks great, and I I'm so glad. This is the one thing we were we were wrong about Supergirl, but we were right about this cast. We we predicted we predicted that. You Where know, is she, by the way? Who? Uh, Millie. Oh, she's not in this movie. If she is, if she is, it's going to be like at a post credit scene. She's not, oh, I she thought she, I thought she, she, she was, was in the who well, the black dude the 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 kind of fat uncle looking black dude. That's o- Otis. He's playing Otis. Yeah, he's playing. Who Otis. is that guy? So I'll tell you. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, there's another story. Okay. Superman Legacy director James Gunn confirms that Guardians of the Galaxy actor Terrence Rosemore will play Otis. James Gunn shared a photo of the main cast of Superman Legacy earlier today, and the director has now confirmed that frequent collaborator Terrence Rosemore will play Lex Luthor's sidekick, Otis. Superman Legacy director James Gunn revealed his upcoming DCU reboot will introduce a new take on Lex Luthor's bungling sidekick. Is Otis... Was Otis created for the Donner movies? Or was, I thought so. I, I, had, so. I had never heard of okay. him. Both him and Miss Tessmacher were both. Right, that's what I thought. Maybe maybe he's just paying homage to it. Good for James Conn. Earlier today, the filmmaker shared a photo of the entire main cast of the movie shortly after completing their first table read, and now it's come to light that Terrence Rosemore, who appeared in all three Guardians movies, will play a new take on Otis. The dim-witted henchman was played by the late Ned Beatty in Superman, in Superman Richard Donner's version and reprised the role for Superman 2. A new incarnation of the character was later introduced in the pages of Smallville Season 11 comic series. There you go. How this latest take on Otis will factor in legacy story remains to be seen. It's safe to assume that he'll be affiliated with Nicholas Holt's Lex Luthor. Filming is scheduled to begin early next month in Atlanta. So there's a chance we will get to see some of these actors in costume, although we'd say Gunn will ensure security is extra tight on the set. Um, so Dude, I, I love this. And I, I know people love to jump down Gunn's throat about him. What? About him always well, using the same people. people. Used, yeah. Here's the thing. I just looked up this guy's IMDb. He's got, he's got like 89 different credits, right? But the thing is, he's always played these kind of little bit roles here and there. He's never really gotten the opportunity to like, be a bigger like I'm not Otis isn't gonna be like huge, but that's this is probably the biggest role he's ever played, and that's incredible that yeah. Gunn is taking this dude and giving him this opportunity to of like course. rip. That's yeah. awesome. I like what what he does. I mean, I think that the dangerous thing. I actually think his wife is very talented, mm-hmm. um, but it's a dangerous thing to keep putting her in movies. She was uh she was she's she's the agent. In, she was the agent in a uh, Peacemaker, right? She was agent in Peacemaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she was the main one. Yeah. yeah. So it's dangerous, to, and she was also in uh, uh, what was it in Black Adam? I think she shows up at the end of Black Adam. Well, yeah, because they did the post credit, so that yeah, was yeah, the yeah. connecting it to Peacemaker. It was. So I like the thing is with her. Um, no, it was Shazam, wasn't it? Because B- Black Adam was was Superman, so I think it was the end of Shazam: A Fury of the Gods, where they go to like try and. Uh, did I get that backwards? No, I think it was Black Adam. Was it? Yeah, is it the very Were there two post credits? Is it very? No, it wasn't the post credit. Is the very end of the movie when when oh. when they when they capture him so it wasn't a post credit it was just the end of the movie so but okay. e- either way doesn't the matter. dangerous part of it is that it doesn't matter how talented she is it's his wife so now every time she's going to be in it in a movie they're going to go of course you put your wife in it so i feel more that i understand that he's got to probably scale back on that and i think she's talented and in the same way that he puts his brother in everything sure like I'm not on. I'm not on the Sean Gun train. I'm not on the Sean Gun train. Like everybody loves him. I I think he's okay. I think he's fine. Uh, look, um, man. But I, but what I will say though is the other stuff, like you just mentioned, mm-hmm. 
putting people in that he's worked with before that he's comfortable with, I got no issue with it. I don't either. And, but I, I'll, I'll take it a step further. I mean, obviously, people love and hate if we do sports analogies. But I'm going to take one of the best examples of keeping your people with you that I've ever seen in LeBron James. So, yeah. like, when he was a kid – and they're all playing like a high school basketball together, but they know, oh, you're special. Like you're actually going to yeah. go to the league and you might be so, the guy. Yeah. He took all his homeboys. And once he started getting that money, he was like, sending you to business school. You're going to yeah, be this. Yeah. You're going to do that. And then they built an empire together. So like, sure, LeBron is the mm -hmm. face of it. And yeah. LeBron makes the most. But like all of his boys ha yeah. have completely just dominated in whatever field that they're in. And because of so I have no problem with people doing this. The only time that I would have an issue if every single time he had a leading lady, his wife always got it. And right, right. Then we got an issue. But that's not what no, happens. That's, that's she just true. always has a she role. Just, she was but, a role. Yeah, but and and it's it but like my it's just the the thing is the other actors, whether it's Michael Rooker or any of these other people that he works with, they show up in other people's stuff. Sure. When was the last time you saw Sean Gunn in anything that wasn't a James Gunn thing? I'm not saying he wasn't in it, but the same thing. And and I'm not saying that he's not that talented. I just think that they should stretch off and do something. I don't need to just be in James Gunn movies. I don't just need to be in I don't movie. follow his filmography enough to yeah. know. And I can look it I up. Could but be, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But it doesn't matter. It, it's neither here nor the problem. The, the thing is I don't have an issue that James Gunn uses people that he's comfortable with because he knows – because James Gunn is brilliant at casting. He's brilliant at casting. It's one of his major strengths. He's brilliant at casting. And I think this cast – is fantastic. I think it's fantastic. I like. I really like what they're doing so far. And it goes to, this is the next part of the story, continue on with the Superman stuff. People are very excited about this. Superman Legacy Table Read may have revealed a Kingdom Come inspired S for David Cornswood's Man of Steel. The first table read for Superman Legacy got underway today in Atlanta and screenshots of the now deleted social media post might have revealed what James Gunn is thinking in regards to the House of El Crest. On the very first day of table reads for Superman Legacy, details for the highly anticipated Superman reboot are already leaking out. Two of the cast members, Hawkgirl actress Isabella Merced, who is going to wash the stink of M Madame Webb off of her because she was the only, and I said it, she was the only one that I thought was really good in, in that, that movie. Hmm. And Miss Tessmacher actress Sarah Simpayo posted their name cards to Instagram to share their excitement, but they might have inadvertently real, revealed the design for the House of El Crest in the process. The design for the crest seems to definitely take inspiration from the 1996 Kingdom Come DC Comics miniseries from Mark Wade and Alex Ross. Fans are now wondering if James Gunn is going to fully commit to the Kingdom Come motif and go with a red and black emblem as opposed to the traditional red and yellow. With filming set to start this spring, fans, fans likely won't have to wait long before getting their first glimpse of David Corns with Superman suit. Filming is rumored but unconfirmed to begin in March, so the reveal could come any day. Back in December, Gunn disclosed. Back in December, Gunn disclosed via threads. He loves threads that the costume was mostly done, but we're going back and forth on some elements. He also previously teased that the suit would be a mixture of classic and modern designs, while also being something totally new and different. It was on stories, and I think it's gone now. But um, and that's yeah, it's pretty similar. Like normally, you'd be fine. I bet you somebody called me. Get that shit off Before the internet the right now. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> And look, this happened, something as small as the Schmodown, right? Mm -hmm. We would p pick out certain little things we wanted to tease for matches and little things, and people would tweet things out from the set, and I'm like, no, take it down. Or that's going to give away the thing from the story. Yeah. And it happened all the time. And that was just from Schmodown. So you knew something like this was going to happen. Did both of the actresses post it and both of them had that? They both pulled it. And they both had that yeah. symbol. Because what would have been interesting is if they had, and not that that was the aim in the first place, yeah. is if everybody had a different like uh, oh, hell yeah, symbol. So if everybody. one was the Kingdom Come, one was the OG, mm -hmm. one was like a mod, like you know what I mean? That would have been yeah. interesting. So but, I remember I did read the Kingdom Come story. I remember when I was working at Warner Brothers because that's all anybody would talk about was that comic. People love that comic and that story. And I remember reading it and being blown away by it and loving it. But Superman is like older in that one, isn't he? Yeah, so they're probably. I, I I don't. Does he have to be older? For that storyline, I think it makes more sense yeah. too. But I I don't I don't think that they're gonna go beat for beat Kingdom Come. I don't think that that would necessarily make sense. Okay. But I did see somebody tweet about this that I thought was interesting. Like with that idea of like the older Superman coming back and kind of like bringing order and all that. I think what would be really cool, based off of what this tweet said, is is. If the world already kind of exists, mm -hmm. metas are out here, vigilantes are out here, all that kind of stuff, and it feels like it's kind of getting out of control, 
And so you had the Justice Society, but then people have kind of just gone off to do whatever mm-hmm. the hell they want. That again, with the term legacy being in the title, that Superman kind of comes in to be a hero in his own and he starts to set a new standard. So people are kind of, and Luthor might even be at the center of that being sure. like, look at these metas doing whatever they want. Like, right. blah, blah, blah. He's obviously being a bad guy. But then all of a sudden here comes Superman and now he is he is that I that that icon that's like coming in. So that you're 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 grabbing a small element out of Kingdom Come, but you're yeah. not actually doing, doing the, the whole storyline. Story. But you just you're kind of eventually leading to where you could potentially do it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's an and look, the Superman stuff just keeps going on. Superman Legacy will film on location in Cincinnati, sparking the Hall of Justice rumors. Reminds me of um Marisol McKee and Adam Collins, mm. where they had a a name before they were Deception. They wanted to be the Howls of Justice. <laughs> Did they really? The Howls of Justice. <laughs> I said no, thank you. All right, Mark Julian over at Comic Book Movie. As production on Superman Legacy ramps up, more and more details are beginning to emerge about the directed film by James Gunn. Internet sleuths were recently able to determine that Legacy will be filming in Cleveland and Cincinnati. Through a report on the tax credits the film received from the state of Ohio. Man, people really do their investigation, huh? Jeez, yeah. dude, people are bored. Like, good God. Filming under the working title of Genesis, Legacy will reportedly receive a one a $11 million tax write-off. It's the filming in Cincinnati that has the fans buzzing, as that's the location of the Union Terminal train station. The facade of the building pr- provided cartoonist Al Gamora and Joe Barbera with inspiration for the design of the Hall of Justice, which was introduced in the 70s Super Friends cartoon. The Hall of Justice is one of two popular base of operations used by the Justice League, with the other being the orbiting satellite known as the, the Watchtower. Watchtower. <laughs> Thanks to the confirmation of on-location filming in Cincinnati, DCU fans are convinced that Superman Legacy will be using the Union Terminal building as a base for the Hall of Justice, which will then be modified by VFX artists in post-production. Okay, so this is the uh, the image itself, and I, I think this is all factual. I think this is all real. I think this is all probably means it's going to happen. And the reason why is just I think it's I think it's a credit to James Gunn. Mm. It just shows this is the guy you want running this thing. He's a fan. He wants to do. He wants to. He he's like, look, you know what we should do? We should actually film it in. Not only do we get it right off, it's where these guys wanted to put this thing. It's where they got the inspiration from. How cool would that be if we I, did that? You can see him having those conversations. I can also see that you get the Hall of Justice and the Watchtower in the sense that the Watchtower is something that gets revealed at the end. I think we don't get a Justice League until the end of the movie. Right. And and that doesn't even mean that we're going to jump into a Justice League movie, but I don't think it gets formed until this is all said and done. I genuinely think that you're having a JSA, the Justice Society there, and they're working out of the yeah. Hall of Justice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that that also gives that further dynamic. If that's what they set up as, like, we're these, we're these heroes, we live by a creed, but now all of a sudden you got this random dude that's like, I'm going to go out here and be a superhero, and he's using his powers recklessly and all right. that kind of stuff the Hall of Justice almost becomes a sham at right, this point right. because you lived up to this code and now nobody's doing that anymore. Yeah, I mean, I do, and it does make me nervous still that I want to see, I, you got to establish a new Superman. You got to establish him because the problem that you're going to have, and I do think Corrin Sweat's going to hit it. I don't know his work well enough, but I think he's going to hit it. Again, because more so because of the confidence I have in James Gunn's casting, mm-hmm. right? But you've got to establish this guy to the audience because if you because what if he doesn't hit and then you're like well this is our Superman that's going to run the Justice League and it's like who cares because <laughs> if this movie dude if this movie doesn't work and I oh, do, and I do we've think we've talked it, about this yeah I do think it will but it's the end of it's the end of the DCU already you can't you can't come back from a from a bomb you just can't a a, a, a modest hit you can come back from and you can say okay well it made money a break even you could probably still do it. Anything less than that, no. And, and I didn't think break even would probably be like a big problem, but I don't think that's going to happen. I feel like there's some juice behind this movie already. Not with this cast. Not with this not, with, not with this director and the fact that he and 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 writer and like mm-hmm. when when has he truly missed? For all the people that love well, their- Suicide Squad, missed. I mean, it's not as far as that's, quality. Not as far as quality. I, 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 it only missed because it was a pandemic. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't make that argument that he that he really missed on that movie. Like, did you not like the Suicide Squad? It was my favorite comic movie of the year. 
that year. I, I, I loved it. I don't think that he actually missed as far as the content of the film. Uh, but I like, don't disagree with no, that. No, but nobody was in theaters. Yeah. So it was just like it's on HBO mm-hmm. Max. Do what you do. Like we know the studios have screwed that up. So that's not. I don't. Mm-hmm. I, don't I don't. I don't put that on him. Um, I have too much faith that this man does his homework. Mm-hmm. That he knows what fits properly. That he actually cares. The main problem that I find with a lot of the people that are, in, it doesn't feel like they really care. So, like, I haven't even seen Madam Web yet, but based right. off of what everybody's saying, it just feels like we're just gonna throw a bunch of spaghetti at the wall and see what happens. Right. So, the Hall of Justice looks like it's gonna happen. I agree with what Winston was saying there. This is a this is a guy that knows this property and also knows, by the way, and yes, he's aware that if it doesn't do well that it's going to be a problem. But he also knows you lead with Superman for a reason, and that's what he seems to be doing. So there's so much news here, guys. You got Lex Luthor. You got Otis. You got, uh, I mean, even the the fact that Nathan Fillion's in there already is a Green Lantern. You got the Halls of Justice. Halls of Justice! You got all this stuff. What stands out to you guys the most? What are you excited about? Were you excited about this movie? Are you still excited for this movie? Were you not excited for this movie? And now are you or you're just like, nah, still don't care. Comment. We want to hear your thoughts. I'll tell you. I'm going to give you my thoughts about Magic Spoon. Winston, I've told you about Magic Spoon. I love Magic Spoon. When I got back from, uh, again, jury duty today, I was like, I need something because I was, as I mentioned before. You're tired and you're hungry. Yeah, but like I need protein. Mm. And and I also like uh, I, I like uh, what I'll do is and, and what I'm gonna, definitely going to do tonight is because once you get past like eight o'clock, you're not supposed to eat anything but like protein. Oh. and that's what Magic Spoon. It's just it's just you have the cereal, which normally when you're having cereal, it's like it's full of sugar. And sure. it, I drink. Uh, uh, I put uh, the almond milk with this. Uh, you have like the peanut butter and the chocolate. They have a bunch of different flavors. Oh, you make it like your own, like kind of Reese's it's sort the, of. It's the best. Wow. And it's like, and I actually like, I crave it now. I crave it when I come back because it's like it does, and it, and it, and it allows me to do my uh, it, my the diet that I've been on. I've lost almost nineteen pounds now. Wow! And, and I'm able to, I'm able to do this. And Magic Spoon has been. I got what happened was because I was I got to be careful about mixing them too because I run out fast. Mm. And I was like, "Oh, I need more! I need more magic spoon!" And now, when my wife's like, "Your magic spoon's here," and I ran out like it was Christmas, <laughs> and I was like, "Woohoo!" And now I'm like, to doing one. I still do the peanut butter and the chocolate. They're gonna go fast, but for people, you go to magicspoon.com/slash big thing, and people have been seeing this, and people have been writing me about it. Go and get magic spoon. You will love it. You'll enjoy it. I promise. It is something. It is. It is. And it's it really is good for you. It's good for you. It's and it's it, you don't because you can really you can you can get those sugary snacks at night, but it ain't gonna help you. And especially if you're getting older, yeah, my cholesterol, not good stuff. Hey man, not anymore. I, I mean, look, I've been on a I've been on a new workout regimen, man. Yeah. It's the same thing as just trying to to you know make sure I'm eating as clean as possible, just because it's easy. It's easy. You gotta get magic. Spoon. You got yeah. I, cl- clearly, yeah. Because you said they've got it's essentially all your classic cereals, but just not bad for you. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole thing is that you, everybody, when you, especially when you were younger, you love cereal. You could just power it down, but you can't do it when you're older. Mm-hmm. And it's like, but this is this is now. Now you've got. Then they have so many frosted flavor. They have like they have everything. They have everything. But me, I I I like the peanut butter and the chocolate. Nice. Links in the description. You want to uh, check it out? Go do it. It is Magic Spoon. It's great stuff. Okay, moving on, guys. Let's move on. Uh, let's stay. You want to stay with DC? Let's stay with DC. Andy Muschietti is reportedly still. Attached to direct the DCU's Brave and the Bold Batman movie. Amid the rumors that Warner Brothers Discovery had removed it. And Flash director Andy Muschietti from the Brave and the Bold comes a report that reaffirms that he's still attached. Did Warner Brothers put Andy Muschietti in a no-win situation by announcing the reboot of the DCEU ahead of the release of The Flash? Or would the movie have flopped even without the rise of the DCU? With a different actor other than the enigmatic Ezra Miller as the Scarlet Speedster and more time to work on the VFX. Would The Flash have far- fared better with film critics and DC Comics fans? We'll never know. But Muschietti has a chance to redeem himself in a bit with the superhero fandom as he is set to helm the DCU's first Batman film, The Brave and the Bold, which will feature the big screen debut of Damian Wayne. Recent reports surfaced that Muschietti had been fired 
for the adaptation, but former Hollywood trade reporter turned online scooper Jeff Snyder is reporting that according to his sources, Muschietti is still attached. Um, anyway, also just as soon as the rumor of Muschietti's firing surfaced, images of his parking spot on the Warner Brothers lot began to surface complete with the Batmobile-themed golf cart to boot. So it looks like um, Muschietti is not going anywhere. And yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think that that one's true. I think they're going to keep... Um, yeah, Winston, I don't know, man. I think that... Uh, I don't think that he's... Nothing against Roke. I just think that maybe his source was off on this one and because I, I don't think he's going anywhere. But I do think that it was a mistake to announce him. I always think it's a mistake to announce a director. Star Wars is the king of this. Mm. To announce a director before their current movie comes out. I think it is a mistake. I don't care if you love it. I don't care if you went and you saw it because... It is. It puts you in a position that if the movie doesn't do well, people are like, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" Unless you just look. James Gunn apparently loves the Flash, right? You and I like the Flash more than most. Um, the beginning and the end, not the best CGI, not great. But I didn't like. I really liked Andy Muschietti. I hated his answers for certain things with the Flash. Hated it. Oh, we meant to do that. The the CGI. Ugh. Then that's a bad choice. Then bad choice because that CGI looked garbage. Yeah, my 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 beef, my two beefs with the Flash, which brought it down a little bit for me. The one, I thought the baby gag was uh, funny. Yeah, I didn't yeah. hate that. I hated the CGI. The CGI was, was so bad. bad. It, it was looked the baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It and looked it, terrible. And it also ages poorly. The first time I saw it, it was clever, and then it just starts getting really stupid, annoying. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, knowing that Barry is always like they're, they're playing him for kind of more mm -hmm. the comedy as far as that goes. I, whatever yeah. it is, what it is. Uh, my beef then with the 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 Speed Force ending is both the CGI and this weird kind of homage to all the other worlds collapsing thing, whatever. But I I, I don't agree with your big bad, your main villain, being showing up near the end of Act Three yeah. for five minutes. That's the stupidest thing in my mind. Unless you are going to show me something where you genuinely see where he's affecting the story throughout. That was a massive problem for me. This is what they need to do. I think that, you know, you you basically, if if they can do, It Part 1 was really good. Uh -huh. It Part 2, not so much, but I don't really blame him for that because the second half of that book is just not as good as the first half. Sure. And the, the, I remember the miniseries was the same exact thing. So I liked a lot when he, what he did well in The Flash was the emotional stuff. Uh -huh. And I hope that they make a more, and they should take a page out of Matt Reeves. I wish they would have somehow figured out a way to make Pattinson. Here's the thing. I would not buy, because Pattinson is how old? Mm. I think we're the same age. I think he's like around 36, 37. Okay. And if that's the case, I'm not buying Pattinson as Batman rolling around with. 37. He's yeah. 37. So yeah. I would not, I'm not buying him. Having a thirteen-year-old son, he's out here fighting crime with and whatnot. Like, I, I in, 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 twenty-four in, years old. You, you it, sure? When he had the, when he had the kid. sure. But I guess the other problem is they already introduced him as him being this young. So, like, you know what true, I'm saying? True, like, that's true. that's the issue is that it's it's Batman Year Two, I believe, is what is what. <laughs> yeah, they no, I know, I know, I yeah. know. They they can't. They definitely are not going to use him. They already, I'm just saying it would have been interesting if they would have done that. And and the other thing, Jensen I don't know if Eccles, man. I love that cast. That's my that's Jensen my, Eckles with Damien. Yeah. Oh my that's god, my, that's my favorite. That's my favorite so far. Have him have him go Soldier Boy a couple times on Damien when Damien yeah, thinks yeah. that he's gonna get one up on him, being like, "If you don't shut your little ass well, up." It shows <laughs> that he's got that darkness from the Soldier Boy portion of it. So, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, what do you think about Muschietti still doing it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? What are your thoughts? And speaking, look, we just brought up Soldier Boy. Let's talk about the boys. The boys, season four premiere date with the new poster. Here it is. Prime Video has announced the official premiere date for the fourth season of The Boys, and we now have a poster featuring the lethal combination of Homelander and Victoria Newman. Victoria Newman was was really kind of fierce on Gen V. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. the, in this last season, The Boys too. Yeah, yeah. Break out the effing confetti. We've all been dying to find out when The Boys will be back on our screens, and Prime Video has announced the ultra-violent comic book adaptation will return for its fourth season on... June 13th. The first three episodes will be available from the 13th with new installments dropping weekly through the season finale on July 18th. The streamer has also released a new poster featuring an alliance between the two characters that is certain to cause major headaches or head explosions for Billy Butcher and his team, Homelander and the potentially even more ruthless Victoria Newman. 
Though the trailer did give us an idea of what to expect, specific season four plot details are under wraps. We do know that the premiere will pick up immediately after the events of the Gen V finale with Homelander joining vice presidential candidate Victoria Newman and her running mate presidential candidate Robert Singer on their campaign. Billy Butcher, meanwhile, doesn't have long to live after overdosing on Temp V in the season three finale. Thankfully, he knows about a certain soup virus that was created in Gen V's woods. For Butcher, by the time they were making the finale, we were pretty deep into breaking season four. We knew that we wanted that virus to be pretty part of season four. We knew that we wanted Butcher to be aware of it. It seems crazy that he wouldn't be aware of it. It became kind of tricky because how do we how do we show that he knows about it without with it being just dialogue? The idea came up that it probably shouldn't even happen in the boys and it should happen in Gen V. Um, it's funny because someone tweeted out, and I saw it, and I was just I, it wasn't even directed at me. I just saw it, and someone was like, "Do I have to do I have to watch Gen V in order to watch season four? And I said, "No, but you should because it was awesome. Yeah. Gen, Gen V was awesome. Gen V was incredible. It didn't do that well." Did it not? No, I thought I, I thought it did, and then, and then someone told me that it it didn't do well, and I was like, "That's a bummer." I, 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 that I really enjoyed that show. It's, a lot. I think it's because Amazon is still a little bit hit or miss. They definitely have stuff that does well, like The Boys obviously does well, Invincible does pretty well. Um, yeah, you know, uh, 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 Reacher <laughs> I've heard has Reacher done has pretty, crushed, has been doing crushed. pretty well, but but Amazon, and Mr. And Mrs. Smith did pretty good too. Did it? Yeah, that's good because um, but they. You know, even though they put out quality stuff, it's very similar sometimes to Apple TV, mm. where it's like they just don't have the clout where people are rushing to go do that. Like I, I think a lot of times, even though they have a lot of that stuff, people don't immediately think of like Amazon when they think about content. Sure. They think about Netflix. They think yeah, right. about HBO. They think about you know what I'm saying. Right. So like I think as they continue to develop stuff like that, that is still quality, mm -hmm. will start to get more attention. I hope so, especially as the boys you know keeps going on, and maybe because. Is this does link to Gen V that more people will go? Okay, I guess I'll tune into it because I, I felt the hesitation in that person's tweet, and I'm like, it shouldn't be there because it was there for me also. Sure, because I saw I didn't love those trailers when there's when I saw those sure. trailers, I was like, the trailers are fine. It looks like they're just trying to go for those shock moments. Was it you or Coy that said that it reminded you too much? It gave you too much like CW feel I, for it a second. Been me. Might have been me, and then yeah, because but it was. Um, but I loved it. I loved That's it. I thought so it was, good. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it, and I and I looked forward to like watching it every week. So, are you guys excited about the boys next season? What do you say? And what do you think about? And I always ask this too. Do you want to see watch alongs or do you want to see reviews? I keep I get it mixed. I get mixed. Some people I haven't gotten like a clear answer. Some people say reviews. Some people say reactions. I want to see kind of an overwhelming uh, response on one or the other. Um, all right, we're going to close out in a second. Before I do, I want to tell you guys real quick about both Nutrafol, um, Nutrafol, which I love. You guys know, and Brett has been using Nutrafol a lot, and then obviously another one is Fume. So I'll tell you both about Nutrafol and Fume right now. Let's talk about some habits, because you guys know you got some habits, and there's nothing better than beating a bad habit with a good habit. And we've talked about fume before you guys you guys know we've talked about fume uh, we've we've had fume on and we're glad that they are back it's great and mark riley is the one who's really been talking this thing up and i can't wait for him to, to talk about it even more so on the show um when he's on for uap and he's just talking about how flavorful it was better than he thought it feels very fresh and it's like a refreshing herbal tea but if it was vapor uh it, it was it, you can look at like sticky soda it's got non it's 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 really good it's it's well weighted it's perfectly balanced it's extremely fun to fidget with and it really look at the, the the wood itself it's it's great you can start the year off right with a good habit by going to tryfume.com slash big thing and getting the journey pack today fume is giving listeners to the show 10 percent off when they use that code big thing to help make starting the good habit much easier because it's you get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit that you're free to enjoy and it makes replacing your bad habit easy. It comes with adjustable airflow dial and it's designed with movable parts. It's great. They use flavored air instead of vapor. The fume is completely, completely natural, by the way, instead of electronics. And there's no, this is the reason why I decided people are like, well, why, why would you, why would you get involved with something like this? Why? Because they don't use harmful chemicals. They use delicious flavors. And that's why I got involved. Fume works. They're great. So thank you again to Fume for sponsoring the show. Let me, let me tell you guys about Nutrafol. 
I'm going to tell you guys about Nutrafol. I'm very excited to tell you about Nutrafol. I've told you about Nutrafol many times over, and I've gotten people, and Nutrafol even said, like, we're, we're back because the audience is listening, and they're they're, they're checking it out, and they're, they're it, it's working. Because if you didn't know, did you know that 80% of men are going to experience hair thinning in their lifetime? Because it's normal. It doesn't have to be your fate. You can get ahead of it with Nutrafol. What is it? Well, it's a clinically tested hair growth supplement for men. A lot of times you blame genetics, but there are multiple things at play when it comes to hair thinning. So what is Nutrafol? It is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. You can take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. And for a limited time, Nutrafol is going to offer our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping. When you go to Nutrafol.com slash men, you got to enter that promo code big thing. You can find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men. N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men. You got to enter that code big thing. Nutrafol.com slash men. Promo code big thing. Very excited to have them on board. All right. Thank you to our friends over at Nutrafol and Fume. Really happy that, they're, that they've been part of the show for a bit. And as I mentioned earlier, as I mentioned now, please consider one of our sponsors. Like, I cannot tell you. Like, I get it, the question all the time. I get every week, hey, I really enjoy your show, and, and I would love to support. Is there anything that I can do? It's like, support yourself, too. Get one of the sponsors. That helps us, and it helps you tremendously. So any one of our sponsors today, all the links are in the description. Get it. Check it out. And then let me know. And let me know how you're liking it. All right, let's go to one or two more stories here. Um, this is the Marvel Studios thing. Marvel Studios is riding high on the numbers for the Deadpool trailer, which did really well. X-Men 97's got some buzz behind it. They've got reshoots on Agatha Darkhold Diaries. And the, the other thing is they also have Eric Pearson doing a polish to the Fantastic Four. They have the Bear showrunner working on the script for Thunderbolt. So they're making some moves, right? And they don't really know what they're doing with Kang yet. Are they going to keep working with Kang? But we do know that Avengers the Kang Dynasty, they're not calling it that anymore. They're already trying to change it. And apparently they were working, whether you believe this or not, they were after Ant-Man and the Wasp, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, they already started to retool because they didn't like the reception or the way that Kang played. So hmm. whether or not you believe that or not, it's that, that's the report. And so this is more stuff about Blade and the Fantastic Four. Rumored details revealed more about the Marvel's plans for the upcoming reboots. So Blade has now gone through several different creative teams, release dates leading to a widespread belief that the movie must be in trouble. It's from Josh Wilding, a comic book movie. It has, after all, been nearly half a decade since it was announced. That's crazy. It's been well, wow, when five you, when years you, ago, yeah. You know what's funny? That That's good writing. Because yeah. you say five years, that's long, but you don't. it doesn't click. Half a decade sounds like it, sounds, it was forever. It, sounds long. it is. I mean, five years ago, that's still that's still, that's long. I mean, five, five years ago is a long, but half a decade sounds so much worse. I know you're you're not wrong, but it does. But it's it still it is. So it it has, after all, been nearly half a decade since it was announced. Though the pandemic can be blamed for at least some of those delays, Marvel Studios does appear to be struggling to crack the Daywalker's big screen return. Though we now have a positive update from Daniel Rickman, he disputes claims. That Mahershala Ali is considering leaving Blade and confirms that Michael Green, the the writer for Blade Runner 2049, is rewriting the script. Mahershala Ali is reportedly happy with the changes being made and it looks like filmmaker Jan Demange will be the one who gets the movie to the finish line. The leaker also mentions that Midnight Suns remains in the work at Marvel Studios with the current idea being that the team will be made up of some of the characters who haven't assembled alongside the Avengers. As a result, Doctor Strange unlikely to appear. As for the Fantastic Four, Richmond backs up Jeff Snyder's claim that Javier Bardem has the current offer for Galactus and notes that Marvel Studios hopes to cast at least two more villains. When it comes to casting the robotic, robotic Herbie, they're looking for a comedian, male or female, to take on the role, and that has prompted this ex-post from Ricky Gervais. Gervais, Gervais. He just says, can I swear? Um, <laughs> earlier this month, Marvel Studios announced that Pedro Pascal, Vanessa Kirby, Joseph Quinn, Evan Moss Rock will lead the Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. They debuted in 61. The team is comprised of Reed Richards, Sue Storm, Johnny Storm, Ben Grimm. They gained superpowers during a space mission, becoming Marvel's first family of superheroes. Shackman has worked with both Avatar the Ray of Water uh, co-writer, 
Josh Friedman and WandaVision's Camp Squares on the latest draft of Fantastic Four. It's now scheduled to be July 25th, 2025. As for Blade, still scheduled for next November, but it's expected to shift into 2026. It could come later, of course, but Marvel Studios needs to pull the trigger on this movie before the moment passes. Mm. Um, what do you think about all this? I think that they're very correct in that last sentence. If they're not careful with Blade, you're going to end up with a new mutant situation. Yeah. And it's the, I, the ironic. The new mutants they shot and just was sitting on the shelf for like four years. But I, I think it became one of those situations that even if the movie had been good, we had been told over and over and over and over again about, oh, it's coming, it's not coming, mm. oh, it's coming, it's not coming. By the time it was actually, I was like, I don't care. Right. <laughs> you don't want to have that happen, and especially not with Mahershala. You, again, you 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 when you bring in Oscar winners like that and Oscar winners of that caliber, yeah. you want to make sure you keep them happy and you keep them around. Um, but uh, you know, as far as all of this stuff goes, as far as all this news and whatnot, I don't think it's bad that they're taking a second to breathe and retool. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing that they are making sure that they like get it right because again, you are so lost mm -hmm. in the woods right now, you need to find the trail and get back. It's true. And look, the other thing is, we said this before when showing how the half a decade or five years ago is it's still a long mm -hmm. time. Mahershala Ali was 44 years old when they announced that movie. He's 50 years old. Yeah. He's like, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I was just going to say the only thing that we didn't talk about, did you see Ruffalo's yeah, the, about the quote? The, uh, which, well, there was a couple. There was a, there was a few. Was one, he was like, I thought streaming was exciting, but yeah, I do yeah, think yeah. there were some missteps. Yep. And two, he said, I don't think there'll ever be a Hulk solo film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was told by Feige. Feige told him they, were, they, they weren't doing it. And it's probably, and what he's, the, the main thing he harped on, which makes sense, <laughs> is that it's just too expensive. Because that, that like, you know, even yeah. them doing the Professor Hulk thing, mm. which is a little less CGI. It's a full CGI movie, yeah. Was just too much. Yeah, I mean, and how much does She-Hulk cost? D uh, didn't Probably they supposedly much. other uh, other than the fact that like you could make the arguments about how it did view count wise that it it blew its whole budget didn't it wasn't that the story that came yeah, out well that's what that's what Tatiana Maslany said that they just they spent so much money on that show and it's like that that's that was during that streaming the, it was like that yeah people didn't know what they were doing with streaming they spent everything on it they didn't know really how to equate what the success was with numbers and they spent so much money on those shows. Um, but this whole report, look, the fact that Marvel's trying to piece things together, the guy, I agree that they have to get the Mahershala Ali of it all figured out quick. And most of what I just said, he's 50 years old. You got to get this movie done. I mean, he's going to be 52 years old. And like, I was just look, looking at Mark Wahlberg was talking about how he's, it, it's, you're 52, you're, and, and The Rock and everybody, they were in that age too. It's not easy. I mean, dude, I got, I hurt my back parallel parking. <laughs> And I'm not, and I'm not in the shape that these guys are in, obviously. But like, they're like, it's like your body is doing some stuff when you're older. It's and 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 that's the whole thing. I'm not like, obviously, you have the best teams in the world, the best nutritionists yeah. in the world. You're getting paid a lot of money to do it. Age is age. But I, like, even even to that point, like, I don't have those kind of resources. But at like 36, like post leg break, yeah. like obviously, I'm I'm getting back into it. But like, it takes so much more effort. Right. It just takes more right. effort. And and like you said. Every half a decade you add, it takes that much more effort. And he's in shape, and he's, I mean, and, and he looks, he looks like he's 40 years old, but like the thing, but, but, you know, Mother Nature is Mother Nature. Well, well so for example, Father I'm sure, time, time. exactly. I'm sure he'll have some sort of stuntman and stuff like that, but if he's doing any sort of fight moves on camera, and yeah. he, and like you said, he twists the wrong way, you That's might have just lost six weeks of filming. Harrison Ford is way older. But Harrison Ford gets hurt now when he sneezes. You know, it's like every movie that the poor guy does, he's getting hurt. Like, That's you know? crazy. And man. it's like, so it just, and, and like I said, I know Harrison Ford's like almost 80 years old, and Mercer Holly is not even close <laughs> to it. But it's still, it doesn't matter. That my point is, you got to get this done. And I think it's less about the fact that people aren't people are going to want to see Blade. People are going to want to see a new mm -hmm. version of Blade. But it's got to what they have to do is they got to do like the. Um, the uh, what's it, what was it called World War Z type of formula because the, the the age old story of World War Z is there was a movie that people were Brad Pitt doing a zombie movie and then there was all these problems and there's all these rewrites this movie's gonna stink it's pretty good and it mm -hmm. did pretty good it's one of the rare stories sure. when that happens but it worked and it's the example I always use because it's like okay now this movie hasn't been shot yet and they could put together a, a complete I mean look at the same thing with like Daredevil Daredevil's the same thing Daredevil was was a completely different show and they just scrapped it all and then they're doing a brand new one and it could turn out to be one of the best marvel shows ever and i hope that 
it looks like they know and they're not putting their feet in the ground. Going, no, we're not doing anything wrong. They mm. know that things are, are not the best. Yeah. I, I, again, the self-awareness to me is the biggest mm. element that mm. I think we we're, we're seeing here. It's promising. Where where I'm I'm not ready to be like everything's good. We're great. Way to write the shit because I have to see it first. Right. Like I have to see it happen, and I genuinely think again the 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 it's that split between the old guard and the new guard of like mm-hmm. the direction they were going with Deadpool. But it gives you the chance to pivot and hard reset. And I think that that's the starting point. So I really think whatever happens there, you're going to gain whatever goodwill because I have good faith that that's actually going to be a good movie. Yeah. And then what do you do after that? And to hear these types of things where it's like we went and got this show. We got the showrunner from The Bear to come and rewrite right. Thunderbolt. That's right. huge. Smart. It's smart. And Super smart. That's getting the people that are hot right now, but getting the right people that are hot right now. And not and just hot. They're hot and they're good. That's what I mean. And yeah, so I mean, but there's a lot of times that people sometimes will just grab the even if they're good, the hot director because oh everybody likes them right now. But this is someone who's doing quality, winning awards, doing those things. So it, that's a good move. Plus the fact that Thunderbolts they want to they want to move with it. And Thunder and Harrison Ford's not in Thunderbolts, right? He's in Captain America. He's in Captain America, okay. but odds are they haven't announced it. Yeah. If they really are about to Red Hulk him out, there's a pretty high probability he might show up in the Thunderbolts, to be honest with you. Is that going to be comical to watch Harrison Ford turn into a Hulk? I don't think it's going to be as ridiculous as you think, mainly because Red I don't Hulk— think, I, don't, I, I don't have an opinion on it. I'm just yeah. curious. Just, just, just from the standpoint that Red Hulk again, he's still like exactly he's General Thunderbolt Ross, Ross. So like he is a military man. So yeah. there's very few times where Hulk, Red Hulk, is funny. Red Hulk is typically like, I'm no, gonna break your spine. I didn't mean. I didn't mean. Just seeing him do. To see Harrison Ford turn into the Hulk. I like, wonder if. I, mean, yeah. I wonder if like his transformation is an off-screen thing, where it's like, where it's like he's he's in the other room and it's like, oh no, he got the formula, yeah. and or then they, just or they make it look cool, and then just bust out of a out of a wall. Yeah. I don't know. They make it look cool. I don't know. Look, save you some money. We covered a lot. We covered a lot of stuff, guys. There's a lot of things we talked about. A lot of Superman stuff today, obviously, too. So any of the things that we talked about, please make sure you let your voice be known. And as I mentioned earlier, if you are able to and you have the means to, please support our show by getting one of our great sponsors here today. I always link it in the description, and I pin it as the first comment. I want to thank Winston for being with us here today. Winston, where can they find you? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, man, I have been so busy uh, with a new job that I've been working right now, but I've been uh, cooking at the same time, so I go... Work all day, 8 to 5, and then 5 to, like, midnight, I'm out here doing all sorts of stuff. So I've got my CBT reviews uh, of a lot of these Oscar movies coming out uh, starting next week, leading up to it. My Dune 1 review will be coming out. That's a CBT review on that. Uh, And then I'll do my Dune 2 review after the movie comes out. I've got a uh, uh, Breakfast AM News for those that follow that over on TikTok and Instagram. Please go and follow me over there, too. Um, I'm doing a Black History Month-like special next week, so i got a lot of great stuff coming out. Uh, and trying to gear back up. It's just, you know, life and creative all at the same time. And so come and support. We'd appreciate it. Life finds a way. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining us here today. Make sure you hit that button. We're getting close to, at this point, we're going to be very close to, I think, 129,600. So we're approaching, we're approaching 130, guys. We're approaching it. Hope to get there by the end of February. Um, the other thing, as I mentioned, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anywhere podcasts are found. Thank you to the patrons that get to see this episode. They see it on Thursday. And you might have seen a couple of, of bits that the that we left in there because they were we, we were goofing around a little bit. So you get a little bit of the the unedited version if you're a patron. So consider being a patron. Patreon.com slash the big thing show. Once we get to six hundred patrons, we're gonna uh, get Mike Kalinowski to do stand up, although we try to weasel his way out. Uh thanks guys. Appreciate it. And Koi will be back next week. Don't worry. For Winston and myself. We're me. We're me? I'm me. He's him. You're That's you. Sarah J. If you, if you know, you know. All right. Bye. Bye.